Wikipedia, the encyclopedia that just can't figure out how to make money as one of the top 10 most used websites on the planet. Wikipedia loves users so much it gives away unlimited free information to them, just to take half of the page guilt tripping users into donating every once in a while. I love users too. Users are the apple of my eye and I always make my designs having users in mind. But I realized I've been neglecting companies and their marketing goals in my redesigns in the past, so I decided to redesign a website solely for monetizing the sh** out of it. And what better case than Wikipedia. It has an outdated design and sucks so bad at marketing that out of billions of people that visit it on a monthly basis, only a small fraction of them are even aware that it has a mobile app with a much better design than its website. But don't worry Wikipedia, I got you. The first thing that comes to mind when talking about money is ads. But I want to respect Wikipedia's ethics and their clear stance against ads, because ads can disrupt the simple and accessible flow of information. Selling merch is also cool, but they seem to have that covered. So the only healthy way left to monetize it is through design and features, something that Wikipedia has a lot of. So what, are we gonna just put a price on some of the previously available features? Well, obviously not, because we all know how that ends. So we're gonna need new things, things that don't disrupt the way Wikipedia works. Money is cool and all, but I can't start monetizing without showing some good faith first. So I'll start by improving the current UI. Wikipedia has an extremely confusing design that feels stuck somewhere between really old and modern. And I know that almost all design decisions are made with the help of users. But let's deconstruct this article page, for example. First of all, there is not a single icon on this page beside this and maybe this. Then there are these floating menus and if you try to hide them, they just disappear and respawn somewhere else with a huge alert every time. Wow, thank you, I think I get it. I would just make the main menu a simple dropdown and redesign the table of contents and tools to have some icons. Plus, I would make them sticky on the sides all the time, even if they're minimized. Then you're halfway through the page and you're trying to access languages, but you gotta go all the way back up because unlike these two, languages can't be on the sidebar like they used to. So let's go back up, but oops, this isn't a scroll to top icon. It summons the full width version as if the line width was already not wide enough. But anyway, where is the scroll to top icon? Oh, it's here in the table of contents. Come on, know your place. I'm gonna keep the line width feature and milk it later. On top of the page, there are all these different tabs and I don't think I've ever seen a more confusing mess of hierarchy in my life. I mean, make a wild guess, what are these? Are they tabs or tools or sections of this page or links to other pages? The answer is that article and talk each have their own set of related subpages or options like editing the article or viewing the history of the talks. Article and talk themselves are considered namespaces. There are 28 namespaces on Wikipedia. For example, cats can be found on the article, article talk, portal, portal talk, category, category talk, and even user or user talk namespaces. So we know that whatever namespaces here needs to be placed on top of these options in hierarchy. I was a little worried that I'm probably cutting down on the title space over here, but turns out this is the longest title on Wikipedia. So we're good most of the time. Down here at the very end, you have this navigation box and it doesn't even show on mobile. Instead, we see a couple of related articles. So we need an alternative. But what are these links? Well, they are pages directly or indirectly related to the page we are currently reading. Think of the Wikipedia article database as top level articles, a couple of subtopics, and many more smaller articles with headings that link to even more subpages. So if I was reading Art in Modern Scotland, the top level article would be Scottish Art, and I'd be among one of the era pages with several sibling articles. Then a level higher would be Scotland, and so on. This could be a sidebar of its own right beneath the table of contents. Then at the end of the article, instead of the nav box, we could have a list of the more related pages. Now that the general layout is updated, we can reimagine every other Wikipedia namespace the same way. I'll give them each a unique icon so it's clear what's what at the first glance. All right, I think I've shown enough good faith. Now it's time to make money. 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 Almost every website and the Wikipedia mobile app have different themes to help users with reading because uh, accessibility and that everyone has their own preferences. So here comes the first paid feature, customization. It will start with font size settings. It's free, simple, useful, and important for accessibility. It will make people go, oh my God, it's so thoughtful of Wikipedia. And that's it, I want their hearts. So then I'll give them a paid choice of three different font styles, serif, sans serif, and monospace. Then again, I'll give them choices for color schemes. Default, paper, and dark are free, and night, eclipse, joy, power, future, 
and retro are paid. I like power a lot. Which one do you like? Finally, we'll reach layouts. And it's time to bring back this little guy and turn it into a wide layout option and a wider one just in case. Okay, but for real, why is this an option but not the ideal reading width of 80 characters per line as decided by literally everybody? I mean, yeah, I get it. The white one saves more scroll space for longer articles at the price of being literally unreadable. So let's add this narrow option there too. Now, you know what would be really funny? If OG Wiki was a thing. I mean, some people might want it back, you never know. But I can't just limit you to these presets, that would be boring. Let's add one extra level and let you make your own theme. This is not just your average theme editor. It's what I like to call a transformer layout. You don't just change the colors or upload your custom font. You move the elements around and resize them however you like. Yeah, I let my users optimize their own experience. Call me Optimus Prime. Then you just save the theme and enjoy your own presets. When I moved languages inside the tools sidebar, you might have objected. Yeah, it's a little harder to access it, but then how would I draw your attention to all these cool new paid tools? Starting with the topic map. When we were talking about the vastness of Wikipedia articles, I knew a top level article sidebar just wouldn't wrap it up. What if there was a visual mind map that showed a wider picture of all the related big and small articles in that topic? Hover on any article and you can see how far the topic extends. If you're on the free plan though, you can go to another page to see a simple list of all related articles. Marketing 101, never give users a dead end. The Wikipedia mobile app has a safe feature and I was thinking, well, why doesn't it exist on the web? So I imagined it just being there on the web for you for free. So you could save whole articles. But what if you wanted to save certain parts of different articles and take notes and refer to them later for research. It's easy. You highlight any part of the text and add it to notes. Once you're done collecting notes, you can open your notes tool, click on unsorted notes and drag them into a note file. Or you can just add something from your own. In the end, you can export all your notes as well. The final paid tool is Wikipal. It's your Wikipedia AI assistant. I know this sounds sketchy and all, like, Jux, are you serious? I'm already on Wikipedia, I can search for whatever I want. Well, yeah, but Wikipedia searches are good as long as you want to find the exact page on a topic. If you had a specific question and you wanted quick answers, then you could ask it from Wikipal, and it would find the corresponding pages, grab the specific data you're looking for, and give it all to you in a bite-sized message. Plus, it could summarize a topic or heading, or explain the information on a page like your seven. And it stays right here. You can minimize it, maximize it, and unpin it if you don't need it anymore. Speaking of AI, have you ever wanted to read a simple translation of a page on Wikipedia, but the target language just didn't have as much data on it? Or the page just didn't exist in your target language? Imagine if your language menu had an AI translation option that quickly translated the page for you. But of course, this would not replace the official language page and wouldn't even be publicly available. It would just be for you. When I was thinking about Wikipal, I noticed how simplified the search function is on Wikipedia. I mean, even the Wikipedia section on a Google search offers more. This is just embarrassing. So beside these simple results, why don't we show some quick definitions? And since the pages listed here are just letter for letter matches, why don't we also show some related pages to the search topic, not just the search query. And that's paid feature number six for you. Now, if I search cute furry feline pet, cat would not be among the results, which is just offensive. Another use case for AI would be to enable semantic search that finds matches based on meaning. For example, right now, if you search for technological advances that led to the smartphone, you would get results with either of these words in it. But in semantic search, it would break it down to microprocessors, touch screens, cameras, and so on. And that's paid feature number, well, you know what? Semantic search should just be free at this point. If you've already upgraded to Pro and you're enjoying the new features, then you might not have any concerns anymore. But I like to think that you do, especially about this layout. It was initially supposed to sell you Wikipedia Pro, but now that you are a member, we don't need to keep promoting all these features by taking up so much space. We can offer you all of these in a new layout that prioritizes your comfort. So say hello to the modern Wikipedia layout. I moved all the most important tools up here for your ease of access. The table of contents, top level articles, and the rest of the tools are happily sitting on the left side sidebar and all the images and quick facts sit on the other sidebar. And even though this whole layout is narrower, it still leaves enough space for the text in the middle to have the ideal width for reading and a scrolling. But it all gets even better when you scroll and everything on the top goes away except the most important tools. So you get the most out of the screen space without even opening the sidebars or going up and down.
at long last, users and editors. The reason why Wikipedia exists in the first place. I think they deserve some love, and I don't mean wiki loves. I mean giving them something special that helps them stand out. This is your average user profile. You can go to the edit page and edit this whole section. Some people make really cool edits and spend a lot of time decorating their profile. But you can't edit around this area or the layout. So I'm adding a customized tab for all users. Inside this tab, you will find the secret to life. Okay, maybe not, but you will find a bunch of quirky options if you're upgraded to pro. For example, you can add your own websites or a custom button for receiving donations, a quick bio, a profile picture, a custom profile theme, and if you want, a pre-made template for showcasing certain information like your contributions. But hold up a second. If you want a more post-2010 layout, just turn on Modern Profile and it will show your profile in this cool modern layout to everyone. Plus, your profile kind of indirectly promotes Wikipedia Pro to whoever visits it. All these features come at the low price of $9.99. Why? Well, I tried very hard to come up with a reasoning and sound smart, but uh, it's $9.99 because I say so. Jeez, it's not like it's real. But let's just say if it was real, would you pay for it? Meet Wikipedia Pro. Heaven for those who love customization. Save personal notes for later. Get a wide picture of entire genres. And get full answers to any questions on the go. Knowledge is power. Supercharge yours. Well, that's all for this video. If you liked it, make sure you do your magic down there and see you on the next one.